Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to call the get and post methods of an API from a C-sharp Windows application. So for this you will need Visual Studio 2022. If you don't have Visual Studio 2022, then I have a video on this and you can download and install it. It is a free community edition. So uh, you don't have to worry about licensing. So once you have Visual Studio 2022, open it and then create a new project. So here you have to search for Windows Forms and you can see here uh, Windows Form App and Windows Forms App.NET Framework. You have to select the first one which uses .NET Core and then click on Next. Here you can give a name for the application. Uh, so let me give a name here YouTube and choose a location or the, uh, the for me the default location is this one and you can change the location by clicking on this button and then click on next here i have dotnet 8 dotnet 6 and dotnet 9 i will be using dotnet 8.0 for this so uh, there is a default one selected here so i am selecting that and then clicking on create button so now the project has been created and you can see in the solution explorer you form one.cs and program.cs Right, so now let's add some buttons and a text box control to this form. So click here toolbox. If you cannot see this toolbox, go to view and then you have to go down here and you can see this tool, toolbox icon. So click on this and it should come up here. Now let's drag and drop two buttons and then a text box control. Right. Now right click this button one, go to properties. Here let's rename this to get. And uh, we also let's uh, update the name property. btn get. Similarly for this one, go to properties. btn post. And for text. We can say post for the text box again go to properties here and we can rename it to txt response and then you have this multi-line property let's uh, make it true so that will allow us to increase the size of this uh, in any direction so which means we can do it like this okay so when you click on get we should show the response here when you click on post again we should show the response here now when you double click this you can see an event like this getting created similarly double click this post button and an event will be created like this now let's add some code uh, so that we can call an API. Here I'll be using a free version of API, uh, which is uh, usually used for testing. First, you need to create a instance of HTTP client, which is uh, like this HTTP client class here. You also need to add a reference to the uh, JSON class here. So use a using JSON. We also need to do something in the forms load where I want uh, this thing to be uh, used on the header should only be uh, set to English. So in that case, you can do like this client, which is this uh, client object that we have created here, HTTP client, uh, clear the request headers and then add this uh, particular header except language US so that we, whatever response we are getting, it should be in English, it will be converted to basically English. So to create this event form one underscore uh, form one underscore load, what I did is I just double click this. So you double click this and this event will be created and then you can add your code here. Now let's add a try catch block here. So we have this try catch block where I have added this line of code txt response dot txt, which is if there is any exception, it will be shown in the text box, which we have added to the form. Now, before we go ahead with the code, uh, which will basically call the uh, test API, what we are going to do is create a message object. So for that, go back to your Solution Explorer, right click, add new item, 
message.cs so a class has been added here Mrs. class let's add some properties to this class so i have added a user id id title and body okay so these are the things which uh, will help me to read the response now let's go back to form1.cs add this to line subcode which is like uh, this is the url which we'll be using to test this so here you can see i am getting a warning here which means i have to add a async here So I have added the async, now the warning is gone. So here what we are doing, reading the, so the, we're setting the URL string here. This is the URL. And then we are, we have created a message class and I'm instantiating that message class. And now I'm saying client.get from JSON, which means this URL is passed, which will, which will basically means is that you will make a call to this particular URL and you are getting a JSON response from this URL. Right, and then what you are doing is that you are converting that JSON to the type message. This type is nothing but the message class which I have created here. So this is my type. So what I'm saying, instructing here uh, to this line of code is that whatever JSON response you are receiving, convert it to this message object, right? Now next is you need to check if it is null or it has a value and then we will uh, populate the text box. So now I have added this code, which is checking if the message is not null, then uh, you have to, whatever value you have retrieved from the response, like message.id, title, body. Now I am showing it in this response text box. Similarly, if there is, if it is null, then I am not showing any response. Rather, I will show a uh, standard text uh, error message here. Okay, so let's do one thing. Let's run it and see whether this works or not. Okay, so now it is running. Let's click on this get button. Right, so you can see I'm getting a response which is like a default, uh, you know, different language response because it's a test uh, test uh, API. So you'll get a response like this. So don't worry about this. But the important thing is that you are getting ID is one title. You are getting some text and body. You are getting some text as well, which means our get response is working. Get request is working. Now let's uh, do a similar thing for the post. So let's add a async and then a try catch. Here we have to then again read the string, which is the URL. So this is the URL, we are setting it here to this. And then I'm instantiating a, the message uh, class here because it is a post. So I have to pass some value to the API. So this is why I'm uh, instantiating this and setting these values here. Next, you have to do two things here. One is you have to post the response. Second is you have to read the response back. So for that, you have to do like this. So create a response object, which is the HTTP response message object and call this HTTP clients post as JSON async and pass this object which we have set here so we have set here this object we have set so set the values of these objects object and then you pass it here url is this one so we are passing these two as parameters to this uh, method and then we are expecting a response right so once we get the response what you need to do is this that is that again you have to read the content of it so response.content read from json async and the message so we want to read it in the same format like the the message type which we have created here in the same format we also want to read it back so now after this line of code we need to display this in the text box so similarly i have added a code here so which is basically checking if it is not null then read the response if it is null then show this standard response in the text box so here you can see a message.userid title body which means now we are retrieving it back from the api so whatever we have passed here we should get back the same thing if you are not getting back the same thing it means it is not working if you are getting it as null again it means there is a problem so basically that is the test here so we are passing this value now the api in real world 
the API will update some database or update some something else, right? At another at another system component, and then it will get you a response back saying that yes, it is updated. And maybe uh, in some cases we may ask for whatever data we have passed. We will we will ask for the same data to be sent back to us. Like in this case, we are reading the same data back, and then we are saying okay, if it is successful, then we are able to read this data back. Okay, so now this is how this post click should work. So let's run it and see what happens next. Now let's click on this post. And you can see I am getting the response back. Whatever I have passed to the API, the API is again responding with those values. So which means our get and post are working perfectly fine. So that is how you need to create a C sub Windows application, and then uh, you can you know try it out uh, using this kind of code. You can call any any API, and uh, you know just it will work the same way. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like my video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to get more information about future videos.